So, look at that logo. That design is beautiful. Justice! Not that one. The electronic duo, not that one. That's recognized all over the world with their cross imagery. Kinda like that one. You may know them, you may not, but if you don't, you might know at least one song, which we'll talk about in here. A French electronic duo consisting of two guys, Gaspard and Xavier. The duo would get their start doing remixes for other people, as well as their own original stuff, until being signed to their label Ed Banger in 2003, but wouldn't make a proper debut until 2007. They were just battling that stage fright. Cross, or just... Huh. An electronic album. This record had quite a bit of hype when it was coming out, and when it came out, really was a ground shaker, spawning numerous singles and getting many accolades. And when all was said and done, ended up on multiple year end lists, and songs from it would be looked back on in high regards, as well as being used in media all over. An electro opera that blends all these elements of rock, synth, sampling, and even orchestral to create a record really unique in its genre that ended up becoming a staple in its field. But despite all of that, nobody talks about it. And you're probably thinking to yourself, what even is this album? I've never heard of it. This cover looks more like rock or metal than electronic. Why is this drawing talking to me? Which are all valid questions, as even after many years and not being talked about as much nowadays, this thing still finds a way to creep up in conversations about electronic music. But not many people know why, or even know about it in full. But there is a reason why this album continues to be brought up time and time again, I guess besides everything I just said earlier. And if you're one of those daft nerds, you may or may not know that when this came out, this was sparking heavy debate on which French boys were actually better, and if Justice would end up replacing the Tin Men, becoming the new Daft Punk of a generation. And with good reason. I don't think that happened, but we'll get to that later. And not everyone agreed with stuff they were doing either, but we'll get to that too. There's some crazy stuff in here, I'm sure you'll enjoy it, even if you aren't a fan or have any clue about these guys. So in this video, we'll be going into the meat of the record, talk about it a bit, and uncover the secrets in Justice's Cross. And hey, leave a like if you're excited. So of course, you probably know them by now, but just like any artist, they had their humble beginnings too. Gaspard and Xavier began creating music solo, but teamed up in the early 2000s. After discovering their mutual interest in French house and disco music, they would create songs together around that time, and the first tracks they recorded and released together as Justice would be in a 2003 compilation album titled Music Lore Vision, Hits Up To You, consisting of many different electro artists. They would make the intro and the second track, Sure You Will, Gaspard actually singing on that one, and Gaspard would make another solo track under his alias Micro Loiser for the seventh song, Back In Your Eyes. After that, they would team up with English rock band Simeon later that year to do a remix of their track Never Be Alone, made for a college radio contest. On this song, you can already hear what would later become their signature sound of chops and song structure. That remix led to them getting a deal with Ed Banger, and upon re-releasing it and rebranding it to We Are Your Friends, the song blew up, being played in clubs, getting its own music video, and actually winning best video at the MTV European Music Awards, which fun fact, their acceptance speech was actually interrupted by a one Kanye West. He was a bit salty on losing for his video Touch the Sky on his album Late Registration and felt he should have won. Kanye interrupting an MTV award show for something music video related? Well, good thing this is 2006. Hopefully that won't happen again. After this, Justice would go on to remix for multiple artists including Britney Spears, Fatboy Slim, and of course Daft Punk, all helping to build their credibility and resume. But even with all these remixes, some people wanted to hear what the group could do on their own, making their own original stuff. It seemed like a ways away, but luckily for fans, they wouldn't have to wait much longer to hear what that would sound like. Recording on this album began in 2005, and would mainly be done in the city of Petty throughout the year, and well into 06. During that time, the previously mentioned Daft Punk would be in their midst of their 2006 tour, Alive, which helped revitalize electronic music in the eyes of the public in North America, due to their set being universally praised, regathering interest in the genre in the mid-2000s. And speaking of Daft Punk, the label that these guys are on, Ed Banger, was actually created by a Mr. Pedro Winter, aka Busy P, who was the former manager for Daft Punk up until 2008. If you remember from my RAM video, he was actually the manager that sent the letter to Disney about the Tron remix album, he would go on to sign a bunch of other names, all doing unique stuff, such as Sebastian, Somi, Mr. Oizo, and past members like Cassius. The duo's creative process is interesting, as when creating a track, instead of just experimenting aimlessly in the studio like a lot of artists do, they would go in with an idea first, and attempt to execute that the best they could. Of course, the thing that would separate them from their companions would be their incorporation of rock elements like distorted guitars and groovy bass riffs. Not really heard in this way in the genre, the album was made mainly in the program 
programs Cubase and, get this, GarageBand, blending with Cubase sample packs. Yep, I guess even your old school music projects have a shot at making it big. They also have a love-hate relationship with sampling, as Gaspar doesn't like doing it out of personal pride reasons, but Xavier more on the side of, if the end product is good, then let's do it. Throughout the album, there's only three credited samples. There are more, but they're put in a way where they appear more as micro bits instead of full sections, taking small pieces from other songs and just throwing them in all over the track, giving the music a sort of chaotic feel to them. Some people the boys said they used were 50 Cent, Queen, and Slipknot, to name a few. This thing will get a couple of singles before it released, the first being Waters of Nazareth, released in September of 2005, and is technically the first single released by the duo in their discography. This would release on a 12-inch and a CD, having two additional tracks being Let There Be Light, which would end up being the second song on the album, and another song Carpates, which wouldn't appear on the record. Water would also show up in a couple places, such as appearing on the Electro Shock radio station in Grand Theft Auto 4, being used in an episode of the car show Top Gear, and my personal favorite, as a track in the video game DJ Hero 2 mixed with Edwin's star song War. But of course, the main song to come out of all this was the smash hit single Dance, or released in April of 2007. This song was big, having multiple elements, remixes, official and unofficial, and even got on charts a couple times, even ending up at number 4 on Rolling Stone's Top 100 Songs of 2007 list. The song was made to be a tribute piece to the legendary Michael Jackson, with references to his songs like PYT, Black and White, and of course ABC. This song was and is still such an earworm to listen to, with a choir of kids singing and chanting the lyrics, being an interpolation of Britney Spears' 2003 song, Me Against the Music, specifically Madonna's part. If I play any more of this, I'm gonna get a DMCA, so I'm gonna stop right here. But back to the song. This would end up getting a music video that would air all over TV. A video of the boys walking forward, wearing t-shirts that would change with the song, and just like its predecessor, would also appear in various places, like in Just Dance 2, or joining his older brother in DJ Hero 2, this time matched up with Janet Jackson's Nasty Boy, as well as its own remix. The album also leaked online before its release, resulting in the previously mentioned unofficial remixes of songs, but the boys didn't mind too much, as to them, any exposure was good exposure. And in the in the end, after much anticipation, the album would release on June 11th in 2007 and would be critically acclaimed on all fronts. Critics praising the blend of genres on here, the dark tones, the unique way of sampling and praising them on creating songs that follow actual progression instead of relying on simple loops. Each song has a personality to it, always feeling like they're moving. The rough distortion, the sparkly sense, the contrast of sounds, it's a great listen through and through. Personally, I think all these tracks are pretty awesome, except for The Party, I don't think that really aged that well. And I'm not too crazy on Valentine either. I don't hate it, it's just eh to me. It was also nominated for the Best Dance Electronic Album at the Grammys, but ended up losing to the Chemical Brothers. The album would place at number 15 on Pitchfork's Best Albums of 2007 list, number 107 on their Best 200 Albums of the 2000s list, and Rolling Stones put it at number 24 on their Greatest EDM Records of All Time list, as well as being put in the compilation book, 101 Albums You Must Hear Before You Die. Sheesh, that's a lot of numbers, and a lot of music. This album really is such a unique blend of genres and sounds, done in a way that only they could do, and it shows. This thing is beautifully crafted, front to back, and it's no wonder why it continues to peek its head from time to time. There's timeless stuff on here for sure, and if you haven't listened to it yet, and you're a fan of electronic music, it is highly recommended. You're doing yourself a disservice. One notable song would be the intro track Genesis, its loud horns and glitchy production, which, although not being a single, was used a lot in promo and in other media like movies and, hey, would you look at that, DJ Hero again, this time in the first game. I'm starting to think there was something going on here. The ninth song, DVNO, would also release as a single in 2008 with an accompanying music video that has a bunch of references to 80s media. This video by Stomper Yoshi shows a side-by-side -side comparison of all the references they could find. And fun fact, as of right now, there is no HD version of this video of available online at all. Probably done to maintain that old school aesthetic, or maybe it's just an old ass video. And one more song worth mentioning would be track number 10, Stress. This song was received well, definitely living up to its name in tone and thumpiness, some calling it a claustrophobic club pounder, and samples the song Night on Disco Mountain by David Shire. But uh, that's not why I'm bringing it up. As later, this song would get a music video and would premiere on Kanye West's website on the 1st of May in 2008. Don't worry, they're cool. But uh, I guess that controversy is a good fit, cause uh, 
uh, this had some drama to it. The video is crazy as it centers around a group of individuals all wearing black leather cross jackets, going around Paris and just doing everything from vandalism to robbery, harassment, and ending with them jacking a car and setting it on fire. Gang gang. Crazy stuff. And it's honestly pretty unsettling to watch at times because it all looks and feels so real, which is the point. And to no one's surprise, resulted in it being banned on TV, received crazy backlash, and even being compared to GTA and a Clockwork Orange. Good job, fellas. Some groups coming out and calling the video racist as the majority of the members doing the acts are black people. But Justice coming out and shutting that down, basically saying, nah dude, if you're thinking racist, you're thinking wrong, because that is not what this video is about at all. It also appeared in NBA 2K13, the soundtrack for that game being curated by Jay-Z. This thing is pretty awesome, and that's pretty much it for Cross, but just to bring him up, because I do want to mention him, the duo would release two more records after Cross, the first being 2011's Audio Video Disco and 2016's Woman. Both would be received pretty well, audio a bit more than Woman, and although both being nice, solid works, neither of them would end up reaching the height or acclaim of their older brother, but Audio Video did have the lead single Civilization on it, which had some buzz, and was used a lot in trailers and TV shows. So yeah, if you listen to this and want more justice, but we're not aware, give them a listen. They're not as dark or thematic like Cross, even leaning more on the poppier side at times, but there's a couple gems in here, one of my faves being New Lands from Audio Video, so check them out if you haven't. Electronic music is such a weird genre as it's not as grounded as the others. As technology grows and people experiment more often, it's always interesting to see somebody make something in the genre that truly stands the test of time. By experimenting and really trying new things, looking at it from a different light, you can really make some interesting stuff. And personally, I think Justice did that here. This album still out there all this time still sounds fresh as hell. And if you haven't heard it by now, well, feel free. Yeah, it kind of stinks that the duo have kind of phased out in the public eye with their subsequent releases, but this album here is an electronic marvel and I hope will continue to be brought up in conversations about electronic music as long as people are still willing to have them. I know I will. I am going to find that cross now. So yeah, what do you think of Justice's cross? Is this in your top 10 electro albums list or are you not stressing about it? Or did you have no idea who these guys are and just watch this whole video because you want to hear me ramble about crosses? Which I mean, you wouldn't be that far off. Leave a comment, I'd love to know. And subscribe if you enjoyed it and you're not already. And I guess this would be the part where I ask for the like goal. But I have a couple other video ideas that I'm pretty excited to do before doing more of these artist cases. We gotta go broad. And if you guys like those, I don't mind turning them into series. But that's only if you guys actually watch it, really. Please watch them. Stay tuned for that. But until then, I will catch you on the flip. See- oh wait, no we're not there yet. Justice, more like just dance, ayo, or just keep your distance because it's still COVID. Those are terrible, I apologize. You know, there was one time I was at a store and I saw this album for like 40 bucks and I was like, hey, you know what? I don't mind grabbing that, that'd be cool. And But then I didn't do it. And then I came back the next week and I saw it there again for $42. And I said, mm -mm, no way, buddy, you gotta be shitting me right now. And then I bought it. <laughs> Come on, what if I came back the next day and it was $44? What am I supposed to do then? Uh, I guess I'd just cry. Wait, I already do that for free. See ya!